well now that Game of Thrones is over, we need to think of a new intro for this week. Or I could comment on the fact that we've just been doing Game of Thrones intros for the last six weeks, and then leave a new and original intro for next week. Yeah, I'll do that. Starting off with some rather sad news this week, the last male Sumatran rhino in Malaysia has died. Certainly not positive news for the species, which is currently on the critically endangered list. Most of these Sumatran rhinos now live on the island of Sumatra, and only one now remains in Malaysia, the female Iman, who is now alone in the Tabin Wildlife Reserve on the island of Borneo. Thanks to poaching and deforestation, it is now thought that a maximum of 100 Sumatran rhinos remain in the wild, leaving the smallest rhino species closer to extinction. In other news, SpaceX has launched the first in a series of rockets that will deploy 12,000 satellites in orbit around Earth to act as their Starlink broadband system. Not much is known about Starlink, but SpaceX say that it will allow everyone from around the globe to access the internet. It really is a behemoth of a task. As I mentioned earlier, it aims to put 12,000 satellites in orbit. To put that into perspective, there are around 2,000 functioning satellites in orbit today. This has obviously raised concerns about the increase of orbital debris that the satellites could bring. However, SpaceX has said there are built-in mechanisms within the satellites that let them detect and avoid any hazardous debris. In paleontology news this week, a paper was published in Nature that described four specimens of a belemnoid species from the Jurassic, which were all preserved with fish in their arms. It seems these cephalopods caught their prey while in oxygenated waters, before falling into a very oxygen poor region, where they suffocated and later became preserved as exceptional fossils. The study also finds evidence to support the idea that diplobelids, the type of belemnoid that these fossils are classified as, were possibly ambush predators whereas the belemnitids, another order of belemnoids, were likely pursuit predators. Also this week, a very cool paper about oviraptorosaur eggs was published. By examining small, thin sections of fossil eggs from an egg pair that originated in Idaho and comparing them to an egg pair from a formation in China, it was discovered that these eggs all belong to the same Eugenus. This Eugenus is known as Macroelonga tulithus, and it therefore demonstrates that huge Gigantoraptor-sized oviraptorosaurs also existed in Western North America at this time, and were not just restricted to Asia. This week, we also welcome not one, but two brand new species of theropod dinosaurs to science. Discovered in rocks of lower Cretaceous age in Thailand, these animals have been named Fuwiang Venator Yam Niomi and Veyuraptor Nongbualam Fuensis. Through comparisons with other known species, these dinosaurs have been classified as basal coelurosaurs, with Fuwiang Venator being diagnosed as Megaraptoran, whereas the exact classification of Veyuraptor is unclear at the moment, and new discoveries are needed to say for certain, although it is possibly a Megaraptoran too. The discovery and description of these new taxa also means that the diversity of basal Megaraptorans has been increased, and it provides support to the idea that Megaraptor originated in Asia. And finally, a paper also published this week describes evidence for a particularly large pterosaur from the early Cretaceous of southern England. The specimen was located on the Isle of Wight, and likely belongs to an ornithocarid, possibly being closely related to Ornithocarus itself. Estimates of its size put the animal's wingspan at around 5.6 metres, making this pterosaur a giant for the time at which it lived. Thank you once again to Nestlig20, The Dinosaur Guy, and Augustosaurus H for sending us news stories on Discord. Also a big thank you to the largely unthanked Capitan Dino, who loyally posts every one of our videos in the new videos and streams server. And thank you for watching this week's episode of 7 Days of Science. I do hope you enjoyed it, and if you haven't already, feel free to subscribe to learn more about our world, its history, and the wonderful life around you. If you have already, we'll see you on Sunday.